Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we're continuing our discussion for the BMO1 2023 paper. And in the previous three videos, we solved the first three problems. In this video, we'll be solving problem number four, which is a number theory question. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So we're asked to find all positive integers n such that n times 2 to the n plus 1 is a perfect square. All right, so that simply means n times 2 to the n plus 1 is a perfect square. So let's call it m square. Okay, so let's try to work with this uh, equation. So first of all, the first thing that uh, you should think of is picking this one, moving moving it to the other side so, so that we have m squared minus 1 and then we can factorize m minus 1 times m plus 1. So this is exactly what we'll be doing. So it's now m minus 1 times m plus 1. Okay, so now let's think about it. We have n times 2 to the n is equal to m minus 1 times m plus 1. Well, if you know a little about GCD, which is uh, really an important thing to know uh, for any math Olympiad contest, then you already know that these guys are uh, like they share at most two. Their GCD divides two. It's either one or two. It depends. If m is uh, odd, then uh, their GCD is two. But if uh, m was uh, even, then uh, their GCD. Oh, sorry. Uh, what did I say? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if uh, m was uh, odd, yes, then the GCD is 2. If m was uh, even, however, then their GCD is 1, as they are both odd. Here, of course, uh, we have 2, at least 1, 2, because uh, n is a positive integer. So actually, that means uh, their GCD is exactly 2. So that means uh, either m minus 1 has 2 to the n minus 1 inside it, and uh, the other one has only a single 2 or the opposite. So that means we have two cases. So let's discuss them. So case 1, if m plus 1 has 2 to the n minus 1 in it. And of course it has something else because we still have an n. So let's say it's times a. And let's say m minus 1, it has a single 2 and uh, something, let's say b. And of course a, b is equal to n. So in this case, if we look at these guys here, we notice that, uh, of course, uh, AB is uh, N, as we said. But you should notice this. Always, when you solve uh, number theory questions, your mind should always uh, look for size. You should always look for size arguments, or for that means inequalities. As inequalities, noticing inequalities is very important in uh, number theory not just algebra. So right now, uh, if we look at this, 2 to the n minus 1, or any exponent, 2 to the n, uh, 3 to the n, 3 to the n minus 1, this stuff here, are always way greater than uh, just like the linear n here, or even n square or n cube. Exponents are always uh, like become very large uh, quickly. So uh, noticing this, that gives us that, since these things are really kind of consecutive, uh, their difference is 2. Here, this thing is way amount, way like too, uh, too large, this thing. It, this thing, however, it's too small. In fact, this thing, the largest thing it can get is 2n. And this thing, the smallest thing it can get is 2 to the n minus 1. Like if a was 1 here, and b was the greatest thing, it's n. So, now these, thing, these things are very close to each other. But these things are really too far away. So uh, th this is, of course, a contradiction in our minds, of course, right now. We, we're noticing that. Uh, but of course, we need here to be uh, like, for, like to formally represent that. And of course, we're going to have the special cases when, when n is uh, small. For small values, uh, maybe our, what we said is incorrect. But then, uh, like for like not really, for example, uh, the values like are not, I don't expect them to be 20 or something. No, they are like quickly, the inequality will be correct. So what does that mean? That means right now, 
uh, what we need to show is n plus 1 minus 2. So this thing here, minus 2. We're going to show that, in fact, this thing is always greater than, strictly greater than uh, 2n. If we have this inequality is correct, then we cannot have this. This is wrong. So if we can show that this thing is greater than this, then uh, actually uh, we are uh, we are basically done. We don't have a solution. So now we just need to see uh, what uh, what values this does not hold. So when n is one, two, three, but for then uh, for some values and greater values, it's going to be correct. So let's check for small values. First of all, n equals one. Uh, for n equals one, it doesn't check. Uh, it's it's like uh, incorrect. So we need to check it. Uh, if n is 1, let's see. Uh, it's 3. The value, let's call it, by the way, uh, maybe something like, let's call this thing f of n, maybe. So f of n, f of 1, or f of n, let's say, is 3. So it's not, uh, like, it's not acceptable. Not accepted, as it's not uh, a perfect square. For n is 2 here, this thing is uh, 2, while this thing is way larger, so it it's also doesn't work. But uh, what is uh, 2 times... Uh, so now actually it's 9, it is 9. So this works actually, and indeed we've got a solution. So n equals 2 is a solution. Nice. What about n is 3? So if n is 3, then this thing here is 4. And this thing here is uh, like 6. And uh, of course, yeah, we need to check it as well. So let's go and check it. 3 times 8, 24 plus 1 is 25. All right, so that works as well. It's 25. That works. And n is 3. is a solution. Next, let's hope that now it doesn't hold. Okay, let's see. 4. Uh, so this one is 8. Oh, still doesn't work. This is this thing here is 10. So we need to check this one as well. All right, what is 4? F of 4. 4 times 2 to the 4. So 16. Uh, wait, 16. Yeah, or simply 2 to the 6. Yeah, this one doesn't work. Uh, as it is... Uh, and this one is uh, 65. So this one is doesn't work. Okay, let's hope now it works. N is 5. Okay, now this thing here is 16. This thing here is 12. Finally, finally. Uh, since it works, that means for this N and uh, larger values, uh, this inequality will be always correct. And hence, we can not have uh, this case, case 1. Because uh, N plus 1 will be way, uh, will be way greater than N minus 1. Uh, sorry, uh, N plus 1. Uh, minus 2 is way greater than n minus 1, which is, of course, a contradiction. <clears throat> so that means, okay, we're done. Of course, and uh, any larger, here we can simply say, if n is greater than or equal to 5, then it will not work. All right, so we only got two solutions in this case. Okay, now let's discuss the other case. Of course, like, how can we uh, show that uh, this works for uh, values larger than, than 5? like 5 and larger, uh, this is easy by induction. Uh, these simple inequalities, you can always show them by induction. Like literally, if you know the basics of induction, then you should be able to show something like that. Okay. Of course, if, you, if you're in the exam, then do the induction. Don't uh, leave it just say by induction. Anyway, uh, right now, let's uh, move on to the other case. Case 2. Uh, case 2, of course, if... Uh, what was it? Okay, now the opposite. m minus 1 is 2 to the n minus 1 times something. And m plus 1 is 2 times p. And, of course, ab is equal to n. Well, we're exactly going to do similar approach here. Uh, this is the smallest value is this. This is the largest value is 2 uh, n. So, in fact, now we just need to show 
this inequality if we can show uh, this actually uh, then uh, we are done actually because that mean m minus 1 is going to be greater than this thing oh okay uh, now actually you can easily check that uh, this one uh, like for n equals 1 2 3 uh, and 4 we we already checked it so for n is 5 does it work for n, for n is 5 of course it doesn't work because we already have it's greater than this plus 2 so of course this this is correct since this is correct, that means we don't have uh, any solution for it, for, like in this case. All right, so that simply means here, uh, the only so solutions are when n is 2 and uh, 3. These are the only solutions. Uh, by the way, like uh, here, if you want to try this in a, formal, in a formal way, then you do it like this. First of all, you say, uh, well, you, be you begin the solution like this. Uh, the answer is n equals 2 and n equals 3. Uh, by plugging, we can see that the values are uh, 3 square and 5 squares. Then you say uh, n equals 1 doesn't work and n equals 4 doesn't work by plugging. Uh, then what you do is uh, you do the same thing we did. We write this m square, you factorize, and then you write that we have two cases. Uh, and in each case, uh, you can immediately now uh, write this inequality and say that now we're just working for uh, n larger than 5, uh, greater than or equal to 5. So this is correct for uh, stuff that are larger than or equal to 5. And the same thing for this one. So you don't really need to discuss anything here. You can, you can immediately do that. And of course, uh, how do you show these for uh, stuff larger than uh, 5? Uh, you can simply do it by induction, as we said. All right. So... Uh, that's it for this problem. All right, so as a summary, this is a really, really classical uh, equation in number theory. Uh, we simply just uh, did, uh, this is m squared, and uh, we simply factorized. Uh, the GCD argument easily gave us the distribution for the powers of 2. Uh, and then simply, um, like an inequality argument, uh, finish this question. Of course, the small details require you to uh, to provide some uh, elegant uh, here induction but it's really uh, an easy thing and i'm going to leave it uh, for you uh, you can of course uh, feel free to share your induction here in the comments and uh, that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this video in the next video we'll be doing problem five uh, don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel and see you guys in the next video